Good afternoon, everybody. It's Mike, the Bowtie Rider. Happy Tuesday. This week, I wanted to continue our conversation about structure, but I'm assuming that you watched last week's video about scenes first. So if you haven't seen that video about scenes, uh, take a second here, time out, go check it out, and then come back and join us here while we dive right in, okay? Last time we talked, I said that you could build a novel entirely out of scenes so long as you understood how they worked. And while that is technically true, it works because scenes are very good at raising the stakes, increasing the tension, making things bigger and better, and adding questions and disasters and turnabouts and ah, ah, ah. Sometimes that can be a little bit too much. Because what scenes are not good at is letting your readers catch their breath and take a moment to kind of relax and reorient themselves. In order to accomplish that, you actually need a new tool for your toolbox, and that tool is called a sequel. Uh, scenes and sequels, they go together like buddy cops, or yin and yang, or chicken and waffles. They're very much a double act, and together these two make up all that there is for low-level story structure. They're that important. They're literally fundamental. I want to go over exactly what sequels are and how you use them, just like we did for scenes last time. So let's go ahead and let's get right to it. The word sequel means that which comes after, and it gets its name because whenever you have a scene, a sequel should come right after it. Like a scene, sequels have some very precise components that occur in very specific orders. You begin with some emotion. That emotion leads to some thought. That thought will then lead directly to a decision that your characters make, and then that decision will beget some action that your characters take. Let's go over each one of these components specifically. So your characters just had a scene, and that scene ended in disaster. It was bad, emotions were high, things got complicated, and then they got worse. Your character needs to actually process those emotions, and the reader needs to see that. That's why you actually open a sequel by letting the reader see those emotions that the character is experiencing. <laughs> why? Somebody stabbed my hat. I'm gonna miss you, buddy. I'm gonna miss you. As a writer, you need to use all of your tools to show us these emotions. If you skip this step, your characters wander around like unflinching robots, not affected by the events that are transpiring around them. Though it is possible to also go too far the other direction. If you go too far the other direction, suddenly your characters are overacting to everything and it's just too much! It's like Jim Carrey wandered into your story. There's a fine line to walk, and it's up to you, the author, to figure out the exact balance that you're trying to achieve in your story. So your character experiences some intense emotion. But no matter how intense the emotion is, it can't last forever. Sooner or later, the emotion is going to die down, and you're going to transition to the next step. Thought. Thought can be kind of vague or overwhelming. Fortunately, I can show you the precise steps to follow at this juncture. The first part is review. Your character should be looking back at what just happened to them and reflecting on it a little bit. This could be as small as a little sentence, or this could be several pages. The next step is analysis. Think of this as the taking stock moment. Where is the character now, what do they know, and what resources do they have? Uh, this is a step, by the way, that's particularly juicy in mysteries. The third and final part is planning. This is where the character or characters sit down and come up with potential actions that they could do next. This is also a spot where you can add a little bit of tension if, say, different heroes or different characters want to do different plans. Right. Let's review what happened. So I found out I had a rival. Somebody, someone, stabbed my hat. Let's take stock here. My rival's still got the better hat, and my head, my head's naked right now. I know my rival's sometimes downtown, so I could either try to fix this hat, buddy, or I could go try to find my rival downtown. Hmm. Easy peasy, right? My one word of caution is just don't go overboard. This doesn't need to be a 10-page opus. It can be done in very, very short succession. Sometimes just a couple of paragraphs is all you need for this entire process. But the point of all this process is that it's leading directly for your character to make a decision. My rival could be downtown, or they could be at the cafe. I'm deciding to go find them downtown and settle this. I'm still a rival. 
The Decision is easily the shortest part of the sequel, but it's also hands down the most important. We want your characters to be proactive, and a couple of sentences showing them consciously making that decision gives them agency over events, as opposed to just having the plot sort of happen to them. Once you have a decision, it leads to action. And that action is kind of like a dangling hook. It's meant for you to be able to plug into the next scene very naturally. This decision and this action very smoothly lead your characters into the next scene, and frequently they also lay the groundwork for the character's goal in those following scenes. So now that we've gone over the components of sequels, how do you actually use them? There's two main ways that you can use sequels. The first way is when you're actually planning your novel. For every single scene that you lay out and consider, plan the corresponding sequel as well. This can help you when you're planning your novel, because the devil is question of, well, what next? Sequels help you figure out what's next, because you get to watch your characters think through what just happened to them, come up with potential plans of things they could do, and see which plan they settle on. Explicitly thinking through that process can help you find your way through the mysterious middle of a novel. So the second way that you can use sequels is to try and control the pacing of your novel. Think of the default as scene sequel, scene sequel, scene sequel, scene sequel, all the way through your entire book. If you want to pick up the pace of your novel though, what you can do is shrink down or eliminate some of those sequels entirely so that scenes run together. That gives you the kind of page turning pull through that you were looking for and that you can get when you have a bunch of scenes together. Conversely, if you want to slow down the novel, the easiest way to do that is to go to all of your sequels that exist and slowly expand them. Make them take a bit more time. Spend more time going through those emotions. After an especially big and intense scene, you should have a proportionally involved sequel for your characters to process. This gives your readers a chance to catch their breath. And that's it. That's all there is to it. With scenes and sequels, you can build elaborate and complicated novels, and you can control those pacings of the novels much better than if you were just using scenes alone. Again, these are also not meant to replace your craft. The point of this is to give you a structure so that you can focus your craft. If you want to read more about sequels, there's two references that I can suggest. One is an author who explicitly uses them, Jim Butcher. He expressly talks about using scenes and sequels in his novels for the Dresden Files. I provided a link below to his live journal where he discusses his process. The second resource is actually the same book that I referenced last time, Jack Bickham's Scene and Structure. I reference this book a lot, and it's because it's really good. If you liked what you saw, please feel free to like, share, or subscribe. That really does help me out. If you have any questions about sequels or how to use them, go ahead and let me know in the comments, and I'll try to get back to you. That's it. That's all I have for this week. I'm Mike, the Bowtie Writer. I will see you all next time.